coins and currency first came to Britain on a large scale with the Roman invasions to boost trade and Romanization. Libre or Libra translates to pound. Celadus translates to shilling. And denarius or denari translates to pence. This is why the symbol for the pound is an L and not a P. About 600 AD, the Anglo-Saxons then introduced the penny and it was used across the whole of the Anglo-Saxon kingdoms. The penny remained the main currency for trading for seven centuries in Britain and it improved in quality year after year. The Welsh people used English currency most probably out of convenience more than anything else. The quality of coinage in England fluctuated year by year. Over time the quality of coins was declining with England having less quality coinage on and off. In 1124 Henry III summoned many of the moneyers to investigate the quality of coins they were producing and he weren't impressed. At least half of these moneyers were producing inadequate coins and some even clipping and filing the edges of coins for profit. This was treason and as punishment the king started to cut pieces of the moneyers themselves off. Over a long period of time the mints across the country were moved to the Tower of London and named the Royal Mint. This is because the Tower of London was the main residence of the monarch at the time and this way they could keep a close eye on the coinage quality. Doing so further improved the quality of coinage in England, with England having the highest quality of coinage in the world during the Edwardian era. These Royal Mint coins were accepted across the whole of Europe because of their great quality, with many European nations attempting to emulate them. The first currency on the island of Ireland was bought over by the Viking King Cedric Silkbeard. These first Irish coins copied the coins of King Athelred II of England. All these coins were pennies and revolved around the Dublin slave trade. They went out of fashion as they were becoming devalued over time. John de Courcy, an Anglo-Norman, started another currency for the island of Ireland in Ulster. However, these coins never really took off. Instead, English currency took off. This was spurred by English trade and the Irish-English territory. The Kingdom of Ireland would then have its own Irish pound that regulated the Irish economy directly. These followed the template of English coins and were pegged to the English penny. Coinage further improved under Henry VII, with portraits and shields becoming much more detailed and lifelike. However, under King Henry VIII, coinage declined a bit. Due to his debts, he started to plate coins with copper, meaning over time the gold or silver would wear off. The most pronounced part of Henry on his coins was his nose, and over time the silver or gold would erode away revealing copper. This is how King Henry VIII got the nickname Old Copper Nose. This all changed when Queen Elizabeth I brought coinage back up to their high standard, and also introduced milling, which is the designs around the edges of the coins to aid counterfeit. During her rule, the penny would become less popular, with larger values of coins being minted. This is because of the huge amount of economic growth in England during her reign called the Elizabethan Golden Age. Scots Pound was introduced by David I who copied the French and English currencies as a template. The Pound Scot over time would have a hard time competing with the Pound Sterling. By James III it was worth less than a quarter. However the Scots tried to save their own Scots Pound. Over time coins in Scotland were reformed to closely match that of England but it still faced much deflation with 12 pound Scots equaling 1 pound sterling. As deflation got out of hand, the Scots pound was pulled out of production in 1707. The Act of Union created a monetary union merging both the English and Scottish monetary system. Coins were also used to boost the friendship and cooperation between England, Scotland, Wales and Ireland. For example, the currency would bear the Scottish coat of arms and the Irish harp. During the English Civil War, the English language finally made its way onto English coinage. These were called Commonwealth pennies. During the Glorious Revolution, when Parliament kicked out the Catholic King in favour of a Protestant one, coinage fell out of the control of the Crown and into the power of Parliament. With the Industrial Revolution and the steam engine, British coins would again become the best in the world, bar none. The coins made during this time are the quality of coinage we still have today, with other nations only catching up as they adopted the Industrial Revolution themselves. 
copper coinage also took off in the mainstream during this time, with silver money becoming less popular. Britain was also facing a silver shortage at this time, which edged on copper coins even more. On the same date, 1797, the first banknote was invented and issued. These first British banknotes were the first to be invented and circulated in Europe. However, it should be noted that the Chinese had been using banknotes for thousands of years prior to this. The Royal Mint was moved to Tower Hill in 1811 as the Tower of London was becoming too cramped at this point. Around this point, the UK was the first nation in the world to adopt the gold standard, ensuring stability. You could take your coins and banknotes to the bank and exchange them for real value gold. World War I saw the loss of the gold standard as the UK borrowed heavily and the pound suffered. The Anglo-Irish Treaty of 1921 saw an Irish free state. They kept the historic currency, but renamed it the Serestat Pound in 1928. Until up around the 1940s, the pound sterling was the dominant currency around the globe. However, as Great Britain declined as the superpower during the Cold War and the USA rose, the USA dollar became the new dominant currency. The sterling area was where nations pegged their currencies to the pound, or used the pound itself as their currency. Many of these nations were part of the British Empire, but a significant minority were not. It started around the 1930s, and at the end of the war in 1945, the sterling area remained the largest and most coherent currency bloc in the world. The sterling area was effectively destroyed when the UK joined the European Economic Community. When it joined, the sterling area fell to the wayside. This ended with a decline of special trade links between the Commonwealth nations and the United Kingdom. It also ended a lot of poor nations' free access into UK markets. Most of the members of the Sterling area would then leave the bloc to peg their currencies to the US dollar. There are three or four nations that use the pound sterling. These are the United Kingdom, the British Indian Ocean Territory, South Georgia and the South Sandwich Islands, and the British Arctic Territory. There are six nations that use their own version of the pound that is pegged to the pound sterling. These are the Falkland Islands, Gibraltar, Guernsey, the Isle of Man, Jersey, and the St Helena, Ascension and the Tristan Kahuna Islands. And lastly, there are five nations that use their own versions of the pound that aren't pegged to the pound sterling. These are Egypt, Lebanon, South Sudan, Sudan, Syria, and lastly Zimbabwe. In the 1960s, there was a debate about decimalisation. This means that nowadays there's a hundred pence in a pound. However, before decimalisation, there was 240 pence in a pound. Most of the world had already decimalised, so it was seen as beneficial for Britain to do the same. Decimal day went really smoothly, with the main criticism being that some outlets used the fog to put prices up. The Royal Mint was moved to Wales for decimalisation, where there was much more space to produce the amount of coins needed. The Royal Mint doesn't only make British coins, it produces coins for over 80 countries across the globe. The EU wanted to create a unified currency since the 1960s. They then came up with the Maastricht Treaty that stated that all EU states would need to adopt a single currency. This opt-out was secured by the then Prime Minister Margaret Thatcher. However, Margaret Thatcher was no longer the Prime Minister when the Maastricht Treaty came to the UK to be voted on. The new Prime Minister John Major was in support of the Maastricht Treaty. However, 22 rebels led by Margaret Thatcher was against it, along with the Labour opposition. They managed to stop the bill passing twice. However, on the third reading, five Labour MPs supported John Major and the bill passed. The Irish pound was then discontinued, making way for the European Euro. This led to Ireland losing their historic currency. However, the Bank of Ireland in Northern Ireland is still allowed to mint its own Irish banknotes. A new form of currency appeared in 1996, cyber currency. This currency is purely digital and can be traded using the World Wide Web. Many nations across the globe have on and off considered adopting their own digital currency as of 2016, including the UK. In some say that we should do away and completely abolish physical money, while others say that we should run a digital currency side by side, while others don't think it's a good idea at all. In 2021, the Chancellor of the Exchequer, Rishi Sunak, announced that a new Britcoin may be on the way. Be sure to check out my other channel, History Sticks, for the complete, longer and comprehensive video.